This video is a continuation of Modeling 101, and in this video we're going to make a gear. And to do so, I'm going to introduce a new tool, which is called Extrude. Extrude is one of these tools that you're going to use all the time in modeling, and so it's good to get uh, this one under your belt uh, right away. So I want this to be a really accurate gear, and so instead of just having this as an external uh, image reference, I'm going to go ahead and bring it into Maya directly, just like I did with the uh, chain. So I'll go back to Maya here. I'm going to go ahead and open my sample object start scene, and that just loads the shaders and textures. Tap the space bar to come out of perspective only and see all four of you. Remember that you want to bring image planes into orthographic views, not into your perspective. So in this case, I'm going to go to the front view, and I'm going to click on the image plane icon right here, and then go ahead and import that image. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this back. Every time you bring in an image, move your image plane back so it's not in the way of your modeling and then go to the attribute editor and set that to looking through camera. And again, that just makes it disappear in these views that it's not useful in. It leaves it where it is useful. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and maximize my front view by tapping the space bar. Again, my cursor is inside that, that view that I want to maximize. Just tap your space bar. There we go. And now I want to identify the primitive that makes the most sense to use here. So you can see that generally this is a, a rounded shape, but it's not rounded on Z as well. It's only around this one axis. So a cylinder would make sense. But in this case, because it has the center hole, the pipe just saves you a step. So I'm just going to select uh, the pipe. And I'm going to double click this. I'm going to go ahead and reset the settings here. So what you want to do here is identify the axis that you want this to come in on. So I'm looking down the front view, which is the Z axis. So I want to set this to the Z axis. And then I need to know the number of um, sections that this thing needs. So I count the teeth going around. And it has 16, and it also has 16 gaps. And so that means that I need a total of 32 divisions around that axis. And then I'll click Create. OK. Uh, and then from here, I, in order to, to drive the, the shape to look right, I want to go back to the channel box, go to my input. So this is my history for this creation. And I want to grab the radius and drive that up. So I'm going to select the word and middle click and drag until I find the right value. If you can't get it quite right, you can add the control key and that gives you more control on how, uh, how quickly this changes over here. So again, this is virtual sliders. And then I want to grab the thickness and drag that down. So or actually, it's going to be up in this case. So I'm having the control key still pressed so I have a little bit more accuracy in, in that. And you can see here, this is not quite um, centered. And it's a good idea not to move the object, but to move the image instead. So leave your object at the origin, just like this. Move your image plane so that it centers up. Okay, so move your reference instead of your object if it's possible. All right, so there are some big advantages to, to leaving your object at the origin, and a future um, tutorial is going to show that. In this case, it wouldn't make a tremendous difference, but it's good practice to leave your object at the origin. Okay, so I'm going to press 4. So I can take a look at what I have. A little bit too big on the overall radius. So I'll just bring that down a, a little bit. And then I'll increase my thickness just to sort of match up that center point. That's looking really good. So um, just to line up the reference here, you can see that it, the teeth are coming off right where there's an edge. And I want those teeth to come out right where there's a face. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate my image just a little bit just to get those lined up where they're basically lined up with the faces. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is just to give us a, a visual reference of what we're making here. So that's that's pretty much it for that. I'll tap the space bar to come back out. I'll take a look at this in the perspective view. And now's the time that you want to make sure you adjust the depth of this object as well. So if you want this to be thicker or thinner, select your scale and then just scale that up or down to whatever you think you want it to be. So something like that looks fine to me. So I'll go with that. And now I want to select the faces where I want the teeth to come out. So I'm going to right click and choose face. And you can see the pre-selection highlight even down here in the, in the front view. So what I want to do is just select one of those and now go around this. So I'm going to press Q to get rid of my scale manipulator and select every other one going around. So there are some slightly faster ways of doing this, but um, this is a good way for us to do it uh, at this point. Okay, so that's it. So just every other face going around, and you can always look down here in your front view. In fact, I'll go ahead and maximize my front view by tapping the space bar, and you can see that I have a face selected every place that I want a tooth to come out. 
All right, go back to the modeling toolkit and click extrude. So extrude, you can either drag out by the local axis and that's gonna work fine. Uh, or you can use this manipulator up here and drive the thickness. Sometimes they do very slightly different things. And so uh, I tend to use thickness most of the time, but the local translate Z is gonna be 100% fine in this case. All right, so I'm gonna tap the spacebar again to come back out and look at what it's looking like. It looks fine in perspective, but you can actually see, and go back to the front view, you can actually see that it doesn't have the taper that it should have. It's really square edge, 90 degrees out here. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some offset into this as well. So I'm gonna hold the control key and left click and drag on offset to increase that offset just to taper that tooth the way it looks like it's tapered from my reference. You can see we get that shape really quickly. All right, so I'll tap the space bar again, tap it again in the perspective to maximize that view. And now we have the basic shape of a gear defined. So I'm gonna turn off the grid again right here just to get that out of the way. And this is looking fine, uh, but it just looks very, um, very rough and CG-like, um, very hard edges. We want to bevel these things out and make it look nice. We don't want to bevel everything because then, it, again, that creates faceting in this area. And here it creates extra geometry out here that's just unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything on the outside of this, all of this stuff, and bevel it and then I'm gonna bevel the inside separately. The reason I'm gonna do that is, even though we can't see it here, I suspect that this would have a little bit more of a, of a chamfer, like a, um, a single segment bevel. And out here, I just want it to smooth out a little bit. So this is to taste, I mean, obviously our reference image doesn't show any of this, so this is just as you think it should be. So I'm gonna right click, choose edge, marquee select the entire object, and then control, hold the control key and marquee select only the middle of the object. And that way I have all of the outside of the object selected and none of the inside selected. And then I'll just click bevel. That's a little bit of a heavy bevel uh, for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and back off the fraction. Again, I'm holding control and left click dragging. And then it's gonna add at least one. That probably is good, uh, but I could add maybe one more segment into that. So that smooths it out without me having to go back and, and mess with the angles in the, uh, in, the, in the bevel operation. So I'll just go ahead and go with three segments in this case. Okay, and I'll press F8 to get back to object mode here. And I can go ahead and uh, assign a material to this. So I'll select the object, right click, assign an existing material, and I'll go ahead and assign the dull silver on this. So you can get a sense of what reflections look like and how it catches light and that kind of thing. So generally it's looking, uh, looking pretty good. I can see that I didn't see this edge right here. So you see that hard edge right there, how it breaks across there? So I do in fact need to go back and play with that, um, that bevel angle a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to the channel box, go to my bevel operation and change this smoothing angle. Just move it up to maybe 45 degrees or something like that. And that is enough that it smooths everything out for you. So now you can see no break, everything holds up uh, properly now. All right, so the outside looks good. The inside just needs a little bit more cleanup. So I'll go ahead and uh, grab both of those edge loops, just double click and then shift double click and go back to the modeling toolkit and run a Boolean, I'm sorry, run a bevel on that. Definitely don't want a Boolean that. All right, so there we go. It's something like that. It's pretty close to what I was thinking uh, anyway. So something like that looks pretty good. I'll press F8 to come back to object mode. We'll see what that does. So that is holding up pretty well. If you wanted to soften these further, you could, uh, you could select all of these edges again and run a second bevel on them that would just be a, a small local offset. So I'll change this fraction down significantly to maintain a, a stronger edge, but still have an edge that would catch the light. That's not something that you have to do. It just, you can see the difference. It just catches a little bit of light there and improves the overall look of the gear. All right, so that's how you make a gear. And again, we focused on creating the right um, primitive, modifying that primitive so it has the right number of faces around it, uh, did some extrude, and then finished off with bevel, which you're gonna use a ton of bevels. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename this gear. Apparently that's not the right keys. There we go, uh, rename that gear. And that would be pretty much it on making a gear.